Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Natasha, welcome to my channel. I am going to do a get ready with me showcasing all new makeup products. I brought in some new makeup products during the Black Friday sales. I did have a haul that went up a couple days ago if you'd like to see everything that I picked up. And I'm able to do pretty much an entire full face of new things. So I thought we could see how they perform, see how they apply together. I already have eye cream and face cream on and I do have some lip balm. I used one of the newer lip balms that I purchased recently. It's from Summer Fridays and it's the Lip Butter Balm and it's the vanilla version. And it's just a clear lip balm. I think they might have changed the packaging because I remember whenever I was originally going to purchase it, I got a sample from a Sephora order forever ago and I loved it and I was determined to get the full size but in the reviews everyone said that the packaging kept leaking like the packaging was not good because I think it was in a metal tube and so if you squeezed it it wouldn't it couldn't like come back and so that product would just leak out uh, this is like a plastic tube and it has a silicone applicator on it it says that this is 100% vegan and even though it says vanilla it has a very slight, very good vanilla scent, but it doesn't have anything that's too strong. It doesn't taste like anything either, so that's great. Loving this so far. And I picked up a couple sunscreens. I usually try to get sunscreens when they're on sale or whenever I can get a good percentage off just because it is something I use regularly and a lot of the stuff that I buy during the Black Friday sales it's to kind of prepare me for the new the new year the entire rest of the year until the next round of Black Friday sales the next year and one of the SPFs that I wanted to try is this one from Paula's Choice it's the ultra light daily hydrating fluid SPF broad spectrum 30 plus with antioxidants and I picked this up because number one I've been wanting to try some Paula's Choice stuff but I heard Sarah Rose talk about this and the way she described it made me think that it was something that would work really well for me because I've been trying to find something that is very liquidy and will work well under makeup. And I do, I prefer chemical sunscreens over mineral even though I know mineral sunscreens are probably better for protecting your skin from the sun. This is a really watery formula. And I do have some face cream on my skin already but it's set in, I've had it on for like a half hour and so it's pretty um, set down at this point. And yeah, this is like super liquidy. I'm definitely gonna have to put on more. I'm gonna put on a little bit more. I'm gonna put some like around my eyes too. Like not up right close to my eyeball, just because I feel like that might sting, but enough that that part of my face is also somewhat protected. If you are looking for really in-depth SPF reviews and comparisons, especially with sunscreens with different price points um, and cruelty-free options as well, Sarah Rose has several SPF videos. They're very thorough, extremely well done. So um, I'll have her channel and some of those videos linked in the description box. Highly recommend checking her out if you're trying to find like the right sunscreen for you. So that feels really nice. It doesn't feel tacky. Um, it does sort of feel like my skin has like some type of moisturizing product on it, but it doesn't feel sticky. It doesn't feel like anything is on my skin, which is great. And it also, it does, like when I smell my fingers with the product on it, I can smell a little bit of a sunscreen scent, but it's nothing that's permeating. I can't smell it while it's on my face. And I have a couple new brushes here. This was like a gift with purchase with an elf order that I did. These look really nice. They kind of look like three really basic shapes, like kind of a pencil brush over here in the middle, a fluffier packing brush, and then a regular crease fluffy brush over here. And I like the color a lot, it's pretty. For foundation, I'm gonna be mixing products like I always do. Uh, one product I picked up recently is this one from NYX. It's the Total Control Pro Drop Foundation. And I got the shade Light Pale. I purposefully went for something much lighter than my natural skin tone. And that way I can use it to lighten up some foundations that I have that are slightly too deep for me. And it's very liquidy, which I love a liquidy formula. And nine times out of 10, I'm mixing products to get the right foundation texture and level of coverage that I want for that day. Today I want something that has like a little bit more coverage just because I do have some redness. And the product I'm gonna be mixing it with is this pretty fresh hyaluronic tinted moisturizer. This is in the shade 7 Light W. It is 
um, too deep for me. And this is a really nice creamy formula. It's lightweight. And so this one being a little bit too deep for me, this one being too pale, I'm going to mix them to match me. And then this one having more pigment and this one being more of a natural finish or a low coverage type of foundation. Um, they're going to mix together and give me like a nice medium buildable coverage is what I'm hoping. I've done this combination a couple times and it seems to work really well. This stuff is really liquidy. How do I do this without spilling on myself? Just gonna do, looks like that. <laughs> and that mixed together seems like a really nice match. I picked up a few face products from Kosas. I picked up their concealer. This is the shade 3.2. And then I picked up their Airy Cloud Powder, or the Cloud Set Powder, and this is in the shade Airy, which I think is the lightest one. I'm going to use the Kosas Powder to set my under eyes, and then I'm going to use the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder to set my face. I am going to make sure that this isn't, like, glowy. Like, I don't know, there are some e.l.f. powders. I think there's a couple different powders in this loose formula, and one of them I think is more of, like, a shimmery highlighting powder or something like that. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is not that. Okay, now I think it's just a regular matte powder. So that's good. So I'm gonna try this concealer. I, I, from the research I've done, it seems like this is more of like a medium color or a medium coverage product. I'm not so sure about that color. That looks a bit, like in real life, it looks a bit yellow. Yeah, that does, that looks a bit dark, but we'll see. Um, I'm gonna take the same sponge and I'm just gonna grab some from that Kosas powder. Use that to set. Okay, when I set it with powder, it seems to work a lot better. I'm gonna try it with a brush on the other side just to see which one I like better. Yeah, I think that helps it. I don't know, it just kind of made the color look less stark with the rest of my skin. Then for that e.l.f. powder, I put some in the lid and I'm just gonna use that to set the rest of my face. I'm in the shade light, by the way, and I think that's a pretty good match for me. And that feels nice. It did a good job at setting down my makeup. And, I mean, it looks like I'm wearing makeup. It's not one of those, like, invisible type of powders, but I do think it did a nice job. I like that. I don't think I've shown this product in action on my channel yet. It's the Ulta Beauty Matte Eye Primer. I'm going to put some of this on my lids. And this one, um, it has a tint to it. It has a little bit of a tint to it, but whenever you spread it out, it goes translucent or it just kind of fades in into nothing. I don't think it really does anything to cancel out the veins on my lids or anything. It has just a hint of pigment to it. So if you prefer something that's more brightening and more concealing, I would recommend either using a concealer or um, using something like the ABH eye primer. That one has a tint to it. And I'm gonna go back in with that Kosas powder and use that to set my lids. I do have the Nabla bronzer in the shade Amber. I purchased this a while ago, but I really haven't ever used it on my face. So this isn't exactly new to my collection, but it is new to me. I'm gonna use this soft fluffy brush from the BH Cosmetics Marble Collection. So I'm just gonna put a light layer of this on. It is very subtle, it's the lightest shade. And it's funny like how how my preferences for bronzer has changed. I used to wear a ton of bronzer. If you look back at some of my older tutorials, I just, I really pack it on. Sometimes I wear more than one. I'm not really doing that so much nowadays. I do still like to create um, a lot of like flush on my cheeks and I start by applying some bronzer there to kind of get it started. Uh, so this is pretty, I, it's not like super noticeable though. I don't see a lot of it on my face, even though I did go back in and apply a lot. And I have a softer brush, like this doesn't pick up a lot of products, so I'm sure if I used something with more, something that picks up better, like this one from Real Techniques. Yeah, even with that one, it's not 
picking up a ton. Mm, that looks better. Yeah, I like it. I just definitely requires a lot of building. I also got a free gift with purchase with my Kosas order and it's this face duo. It's in Papaya 1972 and it's the pressed powder. They also have cream duos like this as well. And so this is like a peachier neutral blush with a uh, like a champagne beige highlight. And the highlight looks very satin. It doesn't really look like it packs much of a punch. Because this is a smaller pan, I'm going to use this smaller fluffy brush to pick up that blush. Oop, that picks up a lot. All right, that's very, very pigmented. So definitely apply with a light hand. It's like deceptive because I wouldn't have thought that would be so pigmented, but it's pretty. And I am using like a smaller brush, so definitely a more concentrated application versus if I were to use a fluffier brush, which I don't know if I really could do that given that the pans are a little bit smaller than a regular single blush. That's a pretty color. <laughs> Again, because the pans are smaller, I'm going to go in with this um, thinner fluffy brush. And you know what? I'm going to apply my setting spray first. This is the Stay All Night Microfine Setting Mist from e.l.f. has one of those metal balls in there. That mist on there is really nice, but it is a very strong smell at first. I can't tell exactly what type of scent that is, but it is very strong. There are quite a few setting sprays that I've applied for the first time on camera. The Charlotte Tilbury one, the Flower Beauty one, now this one. And they've all been very strong smelling when I first apply them. I don't think strong scents like that are necessary. I feel like most people wouldn't prefer that, especially when it's something you're spraying all over your face. It has the capacity to get near your eyes and your mouth. It is lingering a little bit, but it has definitely dissipated enough that it's not bothering me. It doesn't say it's mattifying or anything, it just says stay all night setting mist. So even though it did make me look a little bit glowier, I'm still hoping that it'll do a good job at making my makeup last. So I'm going to go back in with that highlighter. These are very powdery, I will say. That's my first impression. It really didn't do anything. really isn't doing anything. I really don't see it doing anything. Maybe when I look at it in the direct sunlight, I can see a little bit of something that is very, very subtle. You can kind of see it there. It's very, very subtle, but my face wasn't completely matte before I applied this. So I'm guessing a portion of that was also just from having applied the setting spray. Okay, that's like super subtle, which I do have a place for that in my routine on some days where I don't want to have anything that's super noticeable. Now for my favorite part, the one I'm the most excited about, I got the Rose Quartz palette from Huda Beauty. This packaging is just divine. If you can see as I move it around, it has a really beautiful iridescent type of reflect to it. And the shades inside as well are really, really pretty too. Oh, I can't wait. I'm really excited for this. I I really am attracted to these kind of like cool tone, pinky purples, light blues, um, metallic grays. I do have some other mauve type of palettes like this in my collection already, but when I saw this, it was 100% an impulse buy. Usually I wait much longer to purchase eyeshadow palettes and I have been seeing this everywhere. So this is me falling for the hype. I know that probably won't go super well with like the peachy blush that I have on my face, but I'm sure it'll figure itself out once it's all together. I'm gonna use that flatter packing brush and I'm gonna go in with Cherish, which is that light pink matte shade. And I'm going to use that just to like put in my crease. You really can't see it because it's so close to my skin tone, but it adds just a little bit of pink. And I think having that powder down will help it, will help everything else blend really nicely. The next shade I'm gonna grab is this pink matte here. It's in the shade Happiness right here on the edge. And I'm gonna take the fluffier crease brush from that e.l.f. product, from that e.l.f. trio, and work this into the crease. It's 
really pretty. I think I have some shades that are similar in my collection, but I can't think of any off the top of my head that are exactly this type of like Barbie pinky purple. It's blending really nicely and I like that color a lot. I'm gonna mix these two mattes here, Aura and Precious, this more browny one and this more gray one. I'm gonna mix them together because I think the redness from Aura will look nice, but I want to make it just a slightly bit more cool toned. So I'm going to mix them together and put that on the outer half. Going back in with that blender brush, blending those outer thirds. There are two shades that I really, really want to dig into. Uh, the first one is Blissful. This one is like a brown, blue, purple shift. And then this one here, Moon Magic, this is like a light blue, light purple shift. So this one here, this is Blissful, and this one is Moon Magic. Blissful reminds me a lot of Glass Bowl, and Moon Magic sort of reminds me of... Hmm, it kind of reminds me of Phantom from Makeup Geek, but it's a lot smoother, and the purple pigment is a lot easier to pick up. Like, it doesn't have the white base as much as Phantom did. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put Blissful on the lid and then I'll put Moon Magic on the inner corner. I picked up some of that Blissful shade. I am gonna wet it and apply that all over the lid up into the crease. That's pretty, but it's got a ton of fallout. I wonder if it's better just with my finger. These feel a bit chunky, honestly, but maybe that's good. Yeah, definitely prefer applying that with my finger, which I apply most shimmers with my finger, like on most days. I'm going to go in with that powder brush that I use and just gently push away the fallout. I wonder if these just work better with like a glitter glue. In fact, I'll try the other side with a glitter glue. I grabbed the glitter glue that I have from NYX. I'm gonna put that on the lid. And I'm not gonna go in with a brush, I'm just gonna use my finger. I guess I should bring you in, huh? Yeah, definitely going in with a primer and then just your finger. I think that's the way to go. This color combination of like the mobs and that blue shifty type of shade, this reminds me a lot of Oil Slick from Butter London. It was a little liquid shadow in a pot that I really liked. I loved the colors in it and I'm really excited that I was able to find a way to like recreate that without liquid shadows because that one ended up drying out on me. I am going to go in a little bit more with that Aura and Pres Precious combo and just keep make sure that the outer corner is still somewhat darkened and then blend with that purple shade and then go back in and make sure it's blended again. It looks a little uneven here. And I think once I put mascara on and everything else, it'll make more sense. I am gonna go in again with that happiness shade, that matte on the corner. Just make sure that's still visible. And then going in with that pencil brush, doesn't have anything on it. I'm just going in and making sure that she's as blended as she possibly can be. I'm not going to do anything special with my brows just because I don't feel like it. Um, I'm going to brush through them. I need to pluck them. It's been a while. And I'm going to grab the Soft Brownie Brows. No, this is the Soft Blondie Brows, shade 01. It's the lighter, lightest version. I used to always use the darkest one, but I prefer the blonde one. I think it matches me a lot better. Now, I purchased another Tarte Lash Curler. I usually try to get one that's like super bedazzled and cute whenever they go on sale around the holidays, but I don't think they had one this year. And if they did, it was like a weird shape or I just didn't think I would like it. So I decided to just get their regular purple and gold one. And it comes with a mini of their Lights Camera Lashes mascara. I think the covering that was on these jewels is starting to wear off and so whenever I use it on my lashes it tends to leave like black stuff all over my fingers and also I don't think it's like when I compare the squeezing power of these two I don't I feel like this one has lost some of its squeezing power so I'm glad to have 
another a fresh tart one in my collection. Oh yeah, that's definitely a big difference. Nothing like a fresh lash curler. Yeah, that one glitter shade is giving me some fallout, more so on the side where I didn't use the glitter primer. So I'll just have to keep that in mind with those shades. They are a little bit more high maintenance, but they are really pretty, so it's fine, it's worth it. And glittery shades, I usually tend to use a primer with anyway, or apply them wet. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Eyeliner lining just the half of the inside rim, pushing it into the upper lash line, and then using the brush to create like a little bit of a flick outside. Then I have this little mini Charlotte Tilbury mascara. This is the Legendary Lashes 2. I bought a bunch of lip liners from NYX. I really like the Slim Pencil Formula. I bought nine of them. They're all slightly different in undertone and color. And um, my lip liners that I had before were getting pretty up there in age. I just had a handful of them that I wore them whenever I needed them, but they're not like everyday colors for me. And I just felt like I needed to declutter some of my oldest ones and bring in new ones in their place. Uh, these were only like $2.80 a piece. Normally they're $4 a piece. And I really do like this formula a lot, so I thought I'd pick up some new ones. I do have two new lip products that I picked up recently. I made a Besame order and I finally grabbed one of their vintage lipsticks. I love the packaging of this. And I got the shade Wild Orchid, which is a purple shade. And this is so pretty. It looks, it looks more red on camera, but in real life it's definitely more of like a violet type of shade. And I also got the Black Cherry Sheer Slick lipstick from e.l.f. This is one of those you know, supposed dupes for Black Honey from Clinique. So I'm gonna try on the Sheer Slick product first from e.l.f. and I'm gonna wipe off the lip balm that I have on and use my foundation to blank out the edges. Typically, I prefer lining my lips before putting product on, so I'm gonna take the shade Mauve, which is this slightly deeper, more mauve shade, and use that to line my lips. I think that most closely aligns with this shade, or maybe... Maybe natural would be closer. This is Black Cherry from e.l.f. and then this is natural and this is mauve. Mm, they're all, they're very similar. <laughs> I'll be honest, they're very similar. I think I'm gonna, yeah, go with mauve. I think that'll work nicely. Okay, and then Black Cherry. This is creamy. Mm, that's a really pretty color. I do wanna try on Wild Orchid though, but that's pretty, that might be the I might come back to this one and wear this one. <laughs> and just to show you a swatch, this is Wild Orchid next to that black cherry shade. Very pigmented. I swiped it on, I was like, wow, very surprised. But I love these types of shades. I mean, I like them more so, I think, in the springtime, but I do want to try it on just to see what it looks like. And I wanted to buy a purple lip liner from this line but it wasn't in stock at the time so I don't have any lip liners that match it perfectly. I do have this pinky one in fuchsia. I'm going to lightly line my lips with that and I really like the way that this lipstick is shaped. It's kind of in like a little triangle. I don't really know how to apply with this. This shape is a little, takes some getting used to. It's a beautiful deep color, very rich. I do like that a lot, but the shape of the thing kind of makes it difficult to work with. I'm sure like it's shaped that way to make it easier to carve out your lips, but I'm, I'm just not used to this type of shape at all. This shade is stunning. I remember having a liquid lipstick by Stila in the shade. I think the shade name was Aria, and I don't think that is a shade they make anymore. Uh, this is very close to that. I'm gonna try to go for like a blotted lip type of look. This color is so beautiful. I got the matching nail polish with it too. Besame has a like lipstick and nail polish matching set for a lot of their shades. This is the one that stood out to me the most. Love this color. This is so beautiful. 
I really liked the black cherry. I thought I was going to go back to that and use that as my lip for this look, but I think I'm just going to stick with Wild Orchid. That's gorgeous. So this peachy blush here, it's not really going with the rest of my makeup. So I am going to go in with a little bit of the cheek color from PYT Beauty. This is in the shade Exhale. I think I said in my face product declutter that this was in the shade Heartbeat, but the blush is named the Heartbeat Cheek Color, and this is in the shade Exhale, which is the lighter of the two shades that I think they have. I'm just going to grab a little bit of that and put that on top so that it's a little bit more pinky or even if it just neutralizes it a little bit. Yeah, that highlight really doesn't give a lot of highlight. I'm going to try to apply a little bit more. It reminds me a lot of the Essence highlighter, the pure nude one. This one is so close to my skin tone and the sheen on it is very subtle that you have to apply a really light layer and if you apply too much it almost just turns into like a setting powder and it looks like you have like a lot of powder on your cheek instead of a highlight. I don't know if I'm explaining that well but I think this is the same where you need to apply a really light thin layer but you pick up so much on your brush that that's kind of hard to do. I think I might end up just using that as like a lid setting shade or something on my lid or I'm not sure. I really, it's just not really showing up as a highlight for me at all. So this is the final look. Some thoughts on these products. I do like the blush from the Kosas Duo. It is a really beautiful peachy color even though it didn't exactly go with the rest of my look. I still do like that blush a lot. The highlighter I don't really feel like does anything to highlight. I feel like it's incredibly subtle and it's super powdery. Both of the products are. The Black Cherry lip product I thought was really pretty, but definitely the Wild Orchid is like very beautiful. I really love this a lot. And I did blot it down, but my lips don't feel dry. They just, they have a really nice soft matte, slightly satin look to them. This was a very beautiful surprise. Really liked that. Um, I liked the e.l.f. setting powder. I think that looks fine on my skin. It's not the lightweight translucent HD powder that I typically go for, but I do think it's really nice. I already knew I loved these NYX lip liners, so I'm glad to have a lot of shade options available in my collection. I haven't tried the nail polish yet. The e.l.f. setting spray, this one did have a really strong scent when I applied it, but I don't smell it anymore. And now that it's had a chance to kind of sink in, it doesn't make any parts of my face look extra glowy. Sometimes when I go in with the setting spray, I will have to go in later and kind of add a little bit of powder to my T-zone just because the setting spray has taken down the powdery look and it's made me glowy. This one hasn't done that. I find my skin looks still like a soft matte. The concealer, maybe if I were to get another one of these, I would go a shade lighter or something slightly more neutral. This was um, very yellow and whenever I had it just blended out on my skin compared to how pale the rest of my face is, it was quite noticeable. But once I set it down with a powder, it seemed to match a lot better and I don't think you can really notice on my eyes now. And it does have a decent amount of coverage. I do like how much it's covered, um, more of like a medium uh, product. This isn't like a lightweight feeling concealer. It's something where you can feel it whenever you apply it and when you blend it out, but I don't feel it now. It doesn't feel super heavy all day, but in comparison to some of the other concealers that I use often, the ColourPop No Filter, the ColourPop Hyaluronic Acid one, those are really lightweight. This one definitely doesn't have a lightweight feeling to it. Powder I thought was good. I probably should use it to set my entire face to see if it's something that I like. I just used it to set my under eyes and it does feel nice. It doesn't feel heavy or cakey at all. I did try to use my sponge to apply it under one of my eyes and it gave it hard pan immediately. I think that's just a characteristic of baked products. I don't think you're really supposed to dip your wet sponge into baked products because it will give them hard pan. So I don't think that really has any indication of the quality of the formula. So I'll have to use this all over my face and give you some more updates later. I liked this Elf Trio. I thought this worked really nicely. I'm not super picky when it comes to eyeshadow brushes. It is great that I have these three in my collection because they're three shapes and brushes that I use often. And I prefer white brushes over black ones just because they're easier to see. They're easier to see if I've already used them, what color I've used on them. And I think they're easier to clean because I know that they're clean when the color is gone. I really liked the lip balm. I already know that I did because I used up a sample of this previously and I did really like how the sunscreen blended in on my skin. This felt really nice. 
I do enjoy this one a lot, just on first impression. I do like having these drops in my collection. I think they work really well for the type of way that I apply foundation. Um, using these on their own, they do not look good on the skin. I tried to use these just by themselves on my skin and they really emphasize texture. Two reasons for that. This is a really, really light color. This is lighter than my skin. So when I tried putting it on my face by itself, it being so much lighter, it definitely looked like a mask. And also it's so high coverage that high, high pigmented, high coverage face products like that do tend to not look very natural or skin-like on the skin. So I like using these as a mixer with other liquidy and lightweight formulas to get like the right color match for me and add a little bit more pigment, but these aren't something I would use on their own. And lastly, for the eyeshadow palette, I loved the mattes. The mattes were really, really nice to work with, and I do really love the color story that... Oh, I forgot to put Moon Magic on my inner corner. I'm gonna use this little two-sided Urban Decay product these are very chunky and have a lot of fallout, so they need to be used wet for the most part. That's really pretty on the inner corner. I think you can see that. Yeah, that's beautiful for an inner corner shade. really like that a lot. I still have fallout on my under eyes. I wasn't able to brush it lightly off, so it is kind of just like stuck there now. And I don't want to be too harsh and potentially remove the concealer underneath by brushing it off more. So those two shimmery shades that I worked with, they are more chunky, a little bit more high maintenance. But they're so beautiful that it's kind of worth it to me still. Beautiful color story. Cannot wait to play with this palette more. And the packaging is just a 10 out of 10. So yeah, I think for the most part, none of them were horrible. There were some products that I wasn't super impressed with, like that highlighter from Kosas. As I wear this throughout the day, I will put more thoughts in the description box. So be sure to check that out to see how some of this wears, or maybe I've used them a couple times since filming this video and I have other thoughts to share. I usually do that in my full face of new makeup or full face of certain brand videos. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.